Hi and welcome to the YouTube series Burning Textures and Patterns. For more detailed information about this series please see the end of this video. These patterns are burnt with a skew. Skews come in a variety of configurations, both solid point and wire. They all have one thing in common. The skew tips are all knife-like. They have a thin, sharp edge that burns a crisp line. Crushed velvet is a texture that can take quite a bit of time to do. Even though it's time consuming, the finished result is well worth the effort. This is a perfect example of a pyrography pen being used in a way that almost duplicates what you see in real life, in this case, crushed velvet. The reason that this texture takes so long to burn is because the overlapping and multi-directional slashes need to be built up in a multi-layered manner. This texture is built up by burning short slashes in many directions. To start with, burn in one direction, spacing the slashes out in a haphazard manner. In the beginning I usually burn in one direction at a time to save me having to rotate the subject too many times. Randomly stagger the space slashes by stabbing the skew into the surface or by burning very short lines. Once I have covered the area with the slashes in one direction, I rotate the board and repeat the space slashes, which will overlap the previous work at right angles. Once this direction is finished, I then again rotate my board, this time at 45 degrees, and I burn across the previous slashes. I find at this stage of the proceedings that I can burn quite quickly and at a higher temperature. Later I will turn down the temperature of the machine and slow down my application. I'll show you why as we near the finish. When this diagonal section is finished, I rotate the work and burn diagonally in the other direction. I continue rotating in various directions, spacing slashes as I go. I especially concentrate on slashing across spaces that are unburnt. I prefer to use a smaller skew or the toe of a longer skew to burn the slashes. This is because I want the build-up of the texture to be a complex series of short lines that overlap rather than long lines that overlap. The short lines help blur the texture and create a more crushed velvet look than longer lines would. Of course at this stage you may wish to stop, which will mean that your texture is going to be a little more coarse and more light brown in colour than if you keep going further. After continuing this overlapping, rotating and slashing, I then start concentrating on stabbing those areas that remain untouched by burning. At this stage I don't have to rotate my work quite so much, instead I just angle my hand and pen and burn across the untouched portions of the board. It's at this stage that I turn down my heat a little bit and I also push a lot more lightly on the surface than I've previously done. This is because I know if my heat is too high and I push too hard, I will burn through the already established burnt layer and expose the underlying white wood. It's a bit of a fallacy to think that burning hot and heavy on blonde wood will create black burning. The opposite is actually often the case. A darker burn is achieved by leaving the heated nib on the surface for a longer time. If this is done at too high a temperature or the tip is pushed too heavily, you'll risk disturbing the previously burnt areas to reveal some of the original wood colour. You also risk scarring the surface and ruining the smooth matte appearance. Obviously this applies to pens that have variable temperature. For those of you that have set temperature burners, then the only option to achieve dark burn is to set your pen down on the surface for longer periods of time. 
The longer you continue to build up these crossed layers, the darker and more complex the velvet appearance will be. While this velvet texture is lovely on flat objects, it really comes into its own on 3D turned objects. This is because the light plays on and is absorbed into the complexity of the curved matte finish. This texture definitely falls into the pattern variety more than a texture that can be felt. It does look surprisingly good on round or turned objects because the scales look like they are protruding from the wood. The arches in this pattern do take some practice and concentration to burn neatly. This is because we're using a skew which has a knife-like blade. Think of this like an ice skate trying to turn on the smooth rink surface. The skate blade wants to run straight, so to turn smoothly, the blade has to be turned in the direction you want to travel. This is also true in pyrography where, if you want to burn a curve with the skew, you must roll the pen body between thumb and forefinger, rotating in the direction that you want it to curve. It is also true that you can do a tighter turn by allowing less of the blade to be sunk into the wood, or the object that you are burning. By having less blade sunk into the surface, you can more tightly turn without fear of the blade getting caught and wanting to run in a straight line. Because the skew needs to be pulled towards you, it is essential that you orientate your work so you can smoothly pull the pen and turn your fingers in a comfortable manner. Regarding what sort of skew to use, you can certainly use a straight skew, but I personally prefer a curved skew so that I can more easily control how much of the blade is sunk into the surface. If you are using a fixed tip burning pen, then I would suggest that you burn more with the toe of the blade so that you can control the tighter curve. You may prefer to have this pattern and the arches evenly spaced for a neat appearance. I personally prefer to freehand it and not worry too much about uniformity, but I can certainly see the merits of perfect arches when decorating an object. If you do want all of your arches to be exactly the same, please feel free to use a ruler and a pencil to make sure height and width are spaced exactly. Once you've burnt your arches, you then orientate your board in a direction that's comfortable to burn the short strokes that fan out from the base of the valley, where the arches meet. Of course this pattern can be burned with a writing pen as well, but the effect would be much softer than burning with a skew.